What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stacks, man, the numbers. And I know I'm coming to you Friday. I know the weekend. Everyone's getting ready to hang out and get some R&R. &R. It's about 5.30 here after hours. But I wanted to do a quick update here, speaking about uh, this company that I have mentioned before in the past. And it is good, in my opinion, for some short-term trading if you can potentially catch it where the price is overextended or potentially where a big sell-off takes place. And now we feel that we can get a brand name stock at a deep discount essentially quote unquote the Buffett method which I've mentioned multiple times on my channel and even proven in real time over the months and over the years with you guys here but let's get into it here because again I'm not necessarily trying to brag I'm just doing a quick little update and of course try to remind you guys that if you'd like you can join the discord that's free to join discord link in the description of every video and the name of the company we're talking about is philip morris international ticker symbol pm listed here on the new york stock exchange this is a company that i've spoken about for a, a while because i like the fact that of course it's a brand name in the space it seems pretty fundamentally stable over the years uh it, it's been steady it holds its own this is a stock where if the markets do have a big drop and and we we start to sell off one one and a half two percent in a day a company like a philip morris doesn't take the same type of hit as an overinflated speculative you know tech stock that's been on the on the run they're not going to take the same type of hit so philip morris right now 93.77 up over two and a half points today over 2.8 percent here on the close down a couple of cents after hours ran up to over 94 dollars at one point today and we have some decent interesting news here on pm but before we get into the news i want to mention first market cap 145 and a half billion dividend yielding 5.7 percent again this is after our run up back into the 90s yielding 5.7 percent this company trading about 18 times earnings we're earning over five dollars a share look at the beta again the beta is the volatility of the stock in relation to the overall volatility of the market and you can see we're about six tenths as volatile as the market this is what i mean so markets have a boom big drop you may only see a drop of maybe one two percent in change on something like pm when you may have another brand name, uh, like I said, maybe overinflated tech company in a space that you've been watching, you've been holding, uh, but that stock you'll see will take a 7, 8, 10, 12% hit. So this is why sometimes, like they say, better safe than sorry. This is why, in my opinion, uh, it's sometimes it's very, very advantageous to look for companies like this when, in my opinion, we're talking about the bulk of your capital. Again, I'm not talking about all your capital. You know, I mean, it's your money. Whatever you do with it is entirely your own prerogative. But in my opinion, just building the, this growth, this appreciation over months, over years, over decades, in my opinion, it's companies like this. But um, we can see what I wanted to show you was this news article here that came out. And as we see, America's cigarette market is up for grabs. America's original Marlboro Man faces a fresh competitor. This is actually a pretty decent article. Shout out to Carol. But America's original Marlboro Man faces a fresh competitor who also happens to be a Marlboro Man. The showdown between them will reshape the U.S. tobacco market. When Philip Morris International was spun out of Marlboro maker Altria in 2008, <clears throat> the two companies were never expected to compete head-on. Philip Morris's job was to distribute America's best-selling cigarette brand overseas, while Altria will continue to sell it at home. PMI gate crashed the U.S. market 16 months ago through its $16 billion takeover of Zinn, oral nicotine pouch maker Swedish Match. <clears throat> In roughly a week's time, the last commercial tie between Altria and Philip Morris will be severed. A 2013 contract that gave Altria the exclusive U.S. distribution rights to Philip Morris' most successful smoke-free product, IQOS Heat No-Burn uh, no uh, Tobacco Sticks, expires on April 30th. Interesting, right? That we just looked at SMCI earnings coming out on the 30th. And now we have this... Uh, supposed contract here expiring on april 30th but after this date philip morris will be free to compete in the u.s with its top non-cigarette brand for the first time and on this news the stock rallied very nicely here throughout the day as you see opening sub 91 and a half and hitting a high of a touch over 94 dollars a share i mentioned <clears throat> um about 
Two weeks ago, I mentioned that in my opinion, Philip Morris was on sale. I try to, again, it's it's one of the, the stocks that I'm keeping here on my watch list currently. So, you know, anytime I see an attractive price or maybe an overinflated price on one of these stocks on my list, I'll try to mention it in the Discord just to give people a heads up. Again, you know, in, in my opinion, it's really not always about give me an alert. Do I buy it now? Do I sell it now? Right? That That's not really what you should be taking from me and my channel, in my opinion. What, what you, you should be taking is my viewpoint, which may be viewed as a little bit outside the box, the strategy that I use, and potentially just trying to incorporate it into what you're currently doing, trying to better yourself, trying to improve your analysis, your trading strategies, your investing strategies. And of course, no one is ever 100% correct. So we get some right, we get some wrong. But the one thing I did want to show you is that if we bring on my Discord here real quick, you can see that in my long-term callouts channel, I try to mention some things here that, uh, you know, caught my eye, or if I see a stock again on a list that has dipped below a level that in my opinion, I would be buy, I would buy heavily or, or take a position in, then I'll try to mention it to people in the, in the discord and just give them a heads up. But you can see here two weeks ago, April 5th, I mentioned that markets can start selling off. If you were considering a position in PM Philip Morris, the stock is now below $90 a share. In my opinion, would be a nice level to take start a position. Okay, so that was, again, on the 4th, uh, excuse me, on the 5th, and the stock was sub-90. So in my opinion, I view that as the buying point with a stock like Philip Morris. If you give me a big market sell-off, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at stocks to buy potentially at a nice discount that are on sale, and I see something like a Philip Morris down at like 86, 84.50, some price like that, in my opinion, it's almost... I, I personally would have like a 99% conviction rate to step in and not only just on shares, but of course on calls as well. However, we do know that as these stocks are going down, sometimes we try to turn the bottom, look like a financial genius. And what happens? The stock continues to slip. And obviously it, it ends up that we kind of got into our calls maybe a little bit early, a little bit prematurely. So we understand what can happen, but that's why I always say as well, if you're able to buy time with these options, in my opinion, you are really securing potentially and really setting yourself up for, again, nothing's guaranteed, but that almost guaranteed profit return, right? So that's why even on a situation like this, PM down to 87 and change, we know it could keep going down to 86 and 85, right? So you could have very well here stepped in and bought some 90, 92 calls. But instead of buying for just this Friday, because you want to see a crazy return, if you were able to buy two, three, four weeks worth of time, then it is even better. Because if it happens to continue to slip, it will eventually find that bottom, hopefully, and start to rally back and gain that momentum for you. And then boom, before you know it, you're close to the money. You're at the money. Now, all of a sudden, you're in the money. What a great call by you. Congratulations. Take your money and run. So, I wanted to mention the Discord again that I called it out, and that was on the 5th, right? That was on the 5th. So, come here, look. We're, we're on the 4th, look, we're at 91. Boom, the stock drops down. I mentioned that at 11 a.m. Stock was still sub-90, and I said, in my opinion, hey, listen, it's sub-90. Long term, I would consider stepping in. So, if you pieced your way in, which in my opinion is probably the better strategy so if you piece your way in here sub 90 immediately that small position is up over 90 but then the markets began to sell off so now you're back sub 90 so you potentially have another buying opportunity to piece your way back into the stock and then you wake up on monday here you know, uh, what, eight days, nine days later, all of a sudden, now, instead of being sub-90, you're down here at 88 and even sub-88. And then you can see the absolute tear that the stock has gone on. This is just this week. This is just this week. So, if you're in the Discord, if, if, if you were in the Discord, I should say, you would have seen me mention on Monday 
PM is down here. And in my opinion, I would consider possibly taking a position on Philip Morris on the uh, call side. And of course, as you see, you would have made a nice return. But overall, again, to go back to the overall viewpoint here of this stock, in my opinion, I think it's a great company. It, it seems like a slow, steady grower, paying out a very, very healthy dividend. It's resilient, and it's defensive, right? We speak about this all the time. Defensive, not to be confused, confused with defense stocks, defense stocks, which are Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Gumman. So this is defensive, meaning that, again, really, technically, no matter what the economy is doing, whether it's up, down, or sideways, defensive stocks will usually consistently maintain their business or potentially even happen to grow their business during hard economic times. And these are stocks, as we've seen lately, like Constellation Brands, liquor company, STZ, uh, Philip Morris, right? That's what I mean. Whether the economy is up, down, or sideways, if I'm a smoker, I'm going to still go out and buy my pack of cigarettes. That's it. End of story. And of course, we're seeing a company like DraftKings Gambling, which has been pretty resilient as well and has kind of been holding this 40 plus now of course it did have a big run-up so if markets have topped out and we continue to sell off then yes of course something like DraftKings can sell off as well but I'm sure you can appreciate my point this is why I say in my opinion overall and I know I may be preaching here but you know just bear with me but this is why I say in my opinion overall I applaud diversification because we never know what curveball is going to be thrown at us and that's why you know when, when people talk about oh i got a big position in you know tesla amd it's like uh, yeah listen that's great you know these stocks have done so well over all these years so of course you know i can't blame you for having a big position in them and of course i wish you the best of luck i hope they keep growing for you over the years but the other capital that you have should perhaps be placed in again it doesn't have to be philip morris but it could be another brand name stable stock that pays a healthy dividend or you can grab one or two defensive situations like a philip morris or even a coca-cola right because it's 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 like a cheap enjoy enjoyable beverage it's available basically almost in like every country around the world they pay a healthy dividend. They always increase the dividend, right? So that, in my eyes, that's like a great stock to own over the long term. So that's why I always say, in my opinion, diversification, I feel, is key. You can go in heavy with your tech stocks, but consider some healthy dividend players, some brand name companies that are going to remain stable. Consider maybe a, a one or two defensive stock positions. And of course, down here, as of late, like we've been seeing, we have... Uh, obviously all of these wars breaking out, all these geopolitical issues, and of course, because the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency, and we recently printed more of it, we're seeing a slight drop down in dollar value here over time, even if we're not seeing it technically in, the, in this number, but you understand what I'm saying? So if the dollar technically on paper has gotten slightly weaker, what do we usually see? We usually see a rise then in our metals like gold, silver. We see a rise in our material prices, but also, uh, again, uh, we had uh, cocoa prices consistently rising, but also we have something like oil that has been ticking higher as of late as well. So this is why I always preach that, in my opinion, you should really have all of your bases covered. You should be a little diversified. And listen, if you don't want to completely diversify and take like seven positions and you want to focus on, you know, two, three other positions only, but, you know, mainly their tech or something, listen, that's fine. Again, you, it, it's your own money. You do whatever you want with it. You're definitely entitled to your own strategy. But the one thing I do always mention in the Discord as well, if markets do get rocky and volatile, and I always say, you don't know what to buy, buy the VIX, in my opinion. Just buy the VIX. Because you'll notice that when markets randomly take that huge haircut and they're down like 2% across the board, you'll notice something like the VIX will shoot up like 15, 18, 24% or something like that. 
And this is what we mean when we talk about protecting yourself and having hedge positions in place. But overall, again, I know I just spoke for like 15 minutes when I didn't want to about just random stuff. But overall, in my opinion, it is the resiliency of a stock like Philip Morris. It is the consistency, the, the stability of it, and of course, the dividend. And you can either collect that or you can do the drip the DRIP, which stands for the Dividend Reinvestment Program, which is compound investing, which, uh, you know, you, you can pull up a, co uh, a, you know, a compound investment uh, calculator, just type it in, you can pull one up, and, and you can, you know, take a company that pays a, a, a nice dividend, something like, um, could be like a Coca-Cola, Philip Morris, and you can plug McDonald's, right? We can grab any of these companies, Verizon, and we can plug them in and you can say like, oh, if I put like $1,000 a month into this stock, like over 10, 20 years, how much would I have? And you can do it both ways, just straight up with the stock and collecting dividends. Or if you want to, again, drip and actually do compound investing, you know, you bring up the compound calculator. And, and let me tell you something, if you had a strategy like that, and you look at how much you can actually generate over years, it may prompt you to actually change your investment strategy, in my opinion. Which is why I always say you should never close your eyes and, and, and shut your ears and completely block out what other people are telling you. Because you never know when you might get a little tidbit of information that could potentially alter you on your path, and it, it could impact you very positively down the road. Of course, there's negative impacts as well, but I'm sure you understand my point. But looking here at the chart, let's look at the uh, pivot points real quick. We can see next stop may be 94.94. This is the daily we're looking at. In my opinion, it'll probably get there. MACD just crossed back to the upside, and we basically slightly broke below the support of a touch below 88, and then we immediately bounced and, and started to gain momentum again, RSI climbing. Uh, close to 70, but not quite there yet, which is why I'm saying we could maybe see that extra point. Monday, Tuesday, we can get back to that resistance level. Then we can maybe kind of slightly reject and hang out, have the RSI come back down middle of the road before potentially taking the next leg higher. Because in my opinion, this news coming out, this news technically, based on how this contract was, and now the fact that the floodgates may potentially be open, and now Philip Morris is... is free to do this business domestically back here in the states in my opinion this stock may kind of immediately in the short term get back to 100 plus so we'll see of course don't want to get ahead of myself but uh switching over here on the weekly we can see yep we had a pivot point here in 9193 we just completely broke right through that but i do understand that you know we're making these tops and narrowing down so we are kind of in like this longer term symmetrical triangle so we could potentially be near the top of the range and we could have a little rejection but i don't know technically we may actually break out of this channel to the upside on this uh recent news this next resistance here on the weekly night about 99 and a half in my opinion probably only a matter of time uh, MACD cross to the upside on the weekly as well. RSI basically middle of the road still on the weekly at about 56. But see how it just kind of stays. It's that's what I mean. It's it, it you know it, it never gets too high. It never gets too low. It remains stable. They, you know they consistently pay out the dividend. I don't know. In my opinion, the way I look at things, this one's a winner. This one is a winner. But yeah, Bollinger Bands. Okay, we're hanging out. Check the daily. Broke up above the top Bollinger Band. So that's what I mean. We could potentially pause like Monday, Tuesday, back to 93, sub 93, and then we could take that next leg higher and possibly break up to that uh, 95, I believe it was, resistance level. So we'll see what happens. But overall, I, I do like Philip Morris. And uh, originally, I believe, brought to you on this channel. This was maybe the first time we spoke about it. And again, this was mentioned in the Discord as well, right? So this is what I mean. If it was like Monday, Tuesday, and we were looking for a play, something like Philip Morris, I, I would have mentioned, which I did mention. And, you know, any time, like I said, when I see this stock sub 90, in my opinion, I, I feel obligated to let everyone know. And recently, same thing I've kind of seen with Hershey, even though I, I understand cocoa prices have been increasing, but same thing with Hershey, like when it, when it retested back down to the low 180s, we saw another little relief bounce and it basically ran back to 200 real quick. So that's why sometimes keeping an eye 
on these kind of slight movers as opposed to the drastic volatile movers may not generate the same immense percentage returns that you can see with something like Amara, right? Uh, on a Bitcoin swing or pop or something like that. But at the same time, if you were able to reduce your stress level and kind of reduce that quote unquote gambling aspect of it, and if we decided here at, you know, 88, that PM has, like I said, I, I personally was like 99% convinced if you stepped in Monday, Tuesday even, and book calls on PM, it was easily going to get up to 90, 91 minimum, and you probably could have made yourself, you know, a quick little return on some calls. So that that's what I mean when I speak about having that high conviction, right? But yeah, this stock uh, it was all the way back here in May. When I really started uh, mentioning some trades in the Discord on the short term, you know, when I saw them and we had a descending wedge, I mentioned a couple of levels here, as you see, about 95 and a third, up here low 96, up here about 96 and three quarters. And I said that we were approaching this trend line, we were in this descending wedge, so we're going to rally, boom, we happen to pop up right here at like 98 and a half. I think I mentioned puts, but this was during July. As you see, those summer months, we really took the markets even higher. So the stock decided to run up to above 100 real quick before coming back down here to almost this bottom first level that we pointed out of about 95 and three quarters. So this is what I mean when I say about, you know, having this conviction and not just waking up and, you know, rolling out of bed go into the PC and, you know, you see some random stock you never heard of is trending, but it's climbing. So you just blindly go in and then all of a sudden it starts selling off and you're immediately down 10, 15, 20%. Like, it, you know, in my opinion, that's lazy trading, that's lazy investing. And like we always say, you get out what you put in. So if you're barely going to put anything in, then you might barely get anything out. But overall PM brand name in the space and I wanted to bring up that article because it's a very very interesting scenario and we could potentially climb here over time and we may be able to not only get back above the hundred dollar level but actually maintain the flatness of it as we've been holding in the low to mid 90s we could potentially get up and now start holding the low to mid hundreds so just something to think about but all of you long-term investors out there i'm sure you're familiar with this one you may own a piece of it or owned it in the past but yeah in my opinion there's a winner and this is one that i will always keep on my watch list but i'm gonna end it there so once again stocks by the numbers thanks for stopping by if you have any questions comments or concerns drop it down in the comment section i'm usually very quick to reply again discord if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one, or if i personally see something that i like in the short term i'll try to mention it if you want to join the discord discord link in the description of every video and of course with the long term as well you know any stocks we looked at in the past that i mentioned I personally like on the fundamental side, you know, as they slowly creep up or they have strong rally days or they break to new 52 week highs, new all time highs. I try to update in the discord when and where I can, you know, try to stay on top of everything. But yeah, if you want, join the discord, but do me a favor. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel, right? And also subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. You guys have a great weekend, all right?